Well, good morning. good morning. It is the first Sunday in Advent, and because we live a little differently as Christians in the world, we actually begin our new year today. So this is our happy new year because our calendar centers around Jesus. So as we prepare for the birth of Jesus, we begin today. So it's a day of new beginnings. It's a new uh, time. Instead of celebrating with a lot of fanfare like we do at New Year's Day, usually it's just a still, quiet celebration of our new year. So this is the first Sunday of Advent, and we're glad we can be together. I want to say a special welcome to those who are joining us online, whether it's live or you're watching this later. Hope that this is a time where you draw near to Christ in this time of worship. So let us prepare our hearts this day uh, for worshiping him. invite Joy and Jack to come up at this time to light our first Advent candle. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad, whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in, we are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall, say, shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. 
that God may teach us God's ways and that we may walk in God's paths. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Thank you, Joy and Jack. Let us stand as we sing together, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. next few weeks during Advent, we're changing our affirmation of faith from the Apostles' Creed to this Christmas Creed. And so will you say these words with me? I believe in God the Father, who from the heavens God created, sent the Son to save God's fallen world. I believe in Jesus Christ, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, announced by angels, worshipped by shepherds and wise men, who lived to suffer, die, and rise again, and to free me from the power of sin and death. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who has brought me to faith in Christ, 
and by whose continual work in my heart I am ever led to lay before the cradle of Christ my worship, my life, and my love, so that I may live to him and serve him both now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. Our time of prayer begins with this song of opening our eyes, a great Advent song to, for the Lord to open our eyes during this season. Would you pray with me? Lord, on this beginning of Advent, where we begin anew our focus in Jesus, who is the center and the foundation of our faith. Lord, during this time, draw us closer to you. Help us to experience anew your coming and the gift that you are to each one of us. Lord, may we move beyond just going through the motions of this season. Help us to experience your grace and your love in a new and a fresh way. Help us to see that it is beyond just the lights and the decorations and the gifts. But what you offer to us is so much more. And so on this Sunday of hope, we pray for those who feel hopeless this day. Who feel that life is not worth continuing. that they are contemplating ending their life because they have no hope. Lord, intervene in their life today. Work in such a way that they see that indeed their hope is found in you, in you alone. For those family members and friends who continue to grieve for those who have taken their life. Comfort them, O oh God. Help them 
to know that there were things that they may not have seen or may not have known and to release the guilt that they continue to carry. We pray, O oh God, that you would remind us of the hope that we always have, even when it seems to be hopeless. So we give you thanks for hearing us, for always going before us, for your hand of blessing that comes with us, and going behind us, for always being with us, and what hope that gives to us. So hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, choir. And let us stop, stand and give thanks to God for the gifts he has given to us. we thank you for your son Jesus our gift to us and we thank you for these gifts that have been given for you we pray oh God that you would use them for your kingdom's sake in Jesus name amen and you may be seated so let's begin this Advent season by going to the gospel of John and we'll look at the first chapter and the first verse. We'll read 1 through 4, and then we'll read just part of verse 14. Hear these words, the gospel. In the beginning, the Word already existed. And the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And He existed in the beginning with God. And God created everything through Him. And nothing was created except through him the word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it so the word became human and made his home among us and he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness and we have seen his glory the glory of the father's one and only Son. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us begin this time with just a moment of silence. Would you join me? So the noise of Christmas has begun. If you go to Walmart or Kroger or maybe Lowe's, they're ringing the bell, aren't they? You're walking around, maybe you're doing your shopping, and you hear the Christmas music over the intercom. Maybe you hear it in your car or on, the, on Spotify, you have it on. Maybe you hear the rustling of paper that you're already You've already bought your presents, and you're beginning to wrap them, right? And you, the tape, the sounds of Christmas. Maybe it is the oven buzzer going off saying that your cookies are ready or your pie is done. These are the sounds that we begin to hear this time of year, the sounds of Christmas. And these may be some of the sounds that make you smile, that bring joy to your heart. But on the other hand, there may be some sounds of this time of year that actually make you sad, make you grieve. Maybe it's a sound of being reminded of one that is no longer here in our midst. Maybe it is a sound that causes you to remember Christmas's past and how things are not the same. But Christmas is filled with noise and sounds. And that's what this passage is talking about this morning, is the sound of the word. The sound and the birth of the word coming into existence. John talks about this particular noise of the word becoming flesh and living among us in the original Christmas. Hear it again. In the beginning, the word already existed. 
The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and He created everything through Him. And nothing was created except through Him. And the Word gave life to everything that was created, and the Word became human, and He made His home among us. When it says the Word, it's Jesus. Jesus became flesh became a human, and he made his home among us. Jesus is the noise of Christmas. He is the noise from the very beginning of creation. If we were to flip back all the way to Genesis 1, and we read the creation story again, there was God, the creator, And it says here that Jesus was there in the midst, that everything was created through him. And then there was the Spirit, it says, that hovered. We see the Trinity there in creation. But before God spoke one word into existence, anything, it was just the three of them, God, three in one, together. And there was silence. Silence. Do you like silence? Does it make you uncomfortable? Do you like to just sit and be for just a moment? Or do you feel like you need to get up and do something to be productive in some kind of way? Do you need background noise? Do you turn on the radio just low, just so you have something going on in the background? Maybe the TV is always going, no matter what you're doing. Maybe you're playing your favorite podcast. Is there always noise? Or do you welcome silence? Do you have a time where you welcome silence? Before the word was spoken... There was 400 years of silence. Before Jesus cried his first cry, there was silence. From the last prophet into him was over 400 years. Now just think about this, 400 years. Can you wait for 400 years on something? We don't like waiting four minutes in the drive-thru, do we? What if we had to wait 400 minutes? That's six hours and 40 minutes. That's 400 minutes. If we were to wait wait for a gift to arrive on Amazon for 400 days, can you imagine? That is one year, one month, and four or five days, depending on the month it is. We would be in touch with Amazon long before that, wouldn't we? Where is my package? What if Christmas was 400 weeks away? We would have to wait seven years and nine months. That's a long time to wait, isn't it? And what about 400 months? That's 33 years and four months. Let's talk about waiting 400 years. 401 years ago was the first Thanksgiving. Think about how much the world has changed in the last 400 years. The world has changed a lot in the last four years, in the last 40 years, much less 400 years. The people of God waited. They longed for, they prayed for, they asked for God to come and intervene in their life, and they waited And there was silence. No word from God for 400 years. It's a long time to wait. But what the people did not know is that in the silence, God was already at work. Just because he wasn't saying anything, just because he wasn't doing anything, doesn't mean that he wasn't at work, that he wasn't 
already doing a remarkable thing. They didn't realize in the moment that Jesus cried his first cry, that the breakthrough was happening. Because they had gotten so busy in the silence of doing other things, of crowding out the noise of Jesus, that they forgot to listen. They forgot to listen to God. How easy it is for us. We want to fill up every moment of our lives to fill up everything that we can. And we miss God in the midst. We can miss him just like many miss Jesus when he first came. How might we miss God because we fill our lives with noise that drowns out maybe what God is doing? And there is silence. In the beginning, before God, through Jesus, spoke anything into existence, before he said, let there be, let there be, there was no noise. There was just silence. The waves had not been created to crash yet. The, the wind had not been created to blow. The, le- the, the trees had not been created to sway and to make noise. The birds had not been created to sing. There had not been anything but just silence. And yet, God was there in the silence. God was there in the silence. In fact, he shows up in silence because he tells us, be still and know that I am God. It's often in the stillness, in the silence, that we truly come to know who he is. That he reveals himself. And when we quiet ourselves, our inner and outer voices, then God shows up. And he reveals himself in a way that we may not know otherwise. That we may miss otherwise. Elijah, the prophet, decided to go up against all the prophets of Baal, 450 of them, gathered up on a mountain and said, you call down your God and tell him to come and consume this altar. Come and pray and and let him show himself. Let him reveal himself. He went up against 450 of them. Just, you know, bold, courageous And they prayed, and they danced, and they did all of their things, and their God never showed up that day. And Elijah had so much faith that God would show up, that Yahweh would show up, that he doused the altar in water time and time again. And then he called out on God, and God came and consumed the altar. It was a powerful moment. It was one of those things that you go, yes, God is amazing. And then the next day, he learned that Queen Jezebel wanted to kill him. And he ran because he was afraid. And he hid in a cave because he was so frightened by this one threat. Here he had gone against so many and seen God show up in a powerful way. And here he finds himself hiding. And the Lord shows up and says, Elijah, what are you doing here? What are you doing he said, well, they're, they're coming after me. They're going to keep, I'm the only prophet of yours left, and they're coming after me, and they're going to kill me. And God said, I'm going to reveal myself again to you. As if he didn't already reveal himself in the consuming of the fire and the altar. He said, I'm going to show up again. Get ready. Place yourself on the face of the mountain, Elijah, because I'm coming. And so then there was a great wind that blew through, and it was so strong that the rocks began to crack on the mountain and began to fall. And Elijah knew that God was not in the wind. And then the earth began to shake under his feet. 
And as he held on, trying not to fall, he knew that God was not in the earthquake. And then there was a fire that consumed, and he knew God wasn't in the fire. And then there was a gentle whisper. And Elijah knew that that was the Lord. And he hid his face in his cloak and he came to the mouth of the cave to meet the Lord. So often in the noise and all the expectations and all the things that we look toward to hear from God, God says, I am not in all of those things. I am in the gentle whisper. And you may miss it if you don't quiet yourself, if you're not still so that you can know that I am God. The silence, the gentle whisper is often where God reveals himself. And he shows up in this way. When we fill our lives so with the noise, even the good noise, we might miss out on what God has for us. God showed up in the silence right before Jesus' cry. And a priest named Zechariah. Zechariah would come to the temple. All the priests would have their chosen week where they would come and serve in the temple. And this was Zechariah's week. And he came and he served and an angel appeared before him. Gabriel, who said, you and your wife, Elizabeth are going to have a son, and he's going to be the one who prepares the way for the Lord. And Zechariah was like, are you, are you sure you've got the right person? Because in case you don't know, Elizabeth and I are old, and we're past childbearing years, and I'm not sure this can really happen. He didn't really say that, but he said, how can this be? Which is basically the same thing. How can this be? He showed his doubts. And so Gabriel said, you'll remain mute. You will not be able to talk until after the, after the baby's born. And then you will see. And so it, for at least nine months, Zachariah could not talk. He could not say words. He could not communicate in the same way that he normally did. And as a priest, I'm sure that was very difficult. I can't imagine not being able to talk. That's my profession, right? And so Zechariah was mute and he was silent. But the Lord did a work in his life in that silence. For when John was born and when he was presented, everybody else was saying, why are y'all naming him John? And he said, his name is John. And then he was able to talk and he praised God for what God had done in his life. The Lord shows up in the silence. Are we giving him the time to do that? So I want to challenge us. In our book this week, um, Bishop Debbie talks about this, of giving ourselves space for silence. Maybe putting it in our calendar each day for a period of time. And if you're not used to doing that, maybe it's just five minutes a day. Turn off the radio, turn off the TV. Maybe it's at the beginning of the day. There's nothing better that I love than to wake up first thing in the morning. And the only thing we ha have on is the Christmas lights. Everything else is dark in the house. And it's just quiet for a few moments. To start the day. Maybe if morning is not your time, it's noon. You pause during lunch, maybe just a few minutes to drown out all the noise and just be quiet. Or maybe at the end of the day, as you're closing out your day and you just sit for just a few moments and you're silent before God. And allow that silence. To speak to you. Now, it may be the most boring five minutes that you have all day. There may not be anything that happens. 
and that's okay too. We trust that God is doing something. And if you're like me, five minutes seems like an eternity because my mind bounces from one thing to the next, 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 to the next. And I think of all the things I hadn't thought of in previously in those five minutes. Like my mind goes into overdrive. But the important thing is not just to drown out the outside noise, but the inside voices. And just to give ourselves to him again. Sometimes that happens by just saying his name over and over. Jesus. Jesus. Or maybe just breathing in, Yah, and then breathing out, way. Yahweh. Breathing in and breathing out for five minutes. Maybe it's saying the phrase, be still. Whenever your mind wants to jump from the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, just say, be still over and over. And allowing God during this Advent season to show up for you in a way that maybe you haven't experienced before. To trust that even in the silence, God is doing something in you. That maybe a breakthrough in your life is about to happen and you don't want to miss it. Because you're so busy doing everything else. You want to make sure that you don't miss like the Israelites did. The word being spoken into your life. Maybe you want to see God show up in a way in the gentle whisper that he hasn't done before. Or maybe he's preparing you for what's next in your life. So let us give this time to the Lord, this Advent season in silence. Let's pause for a few moments of silence as we close. Lord, in these moments of being still before you, may you reveal yourself to us in a new and a fresh way. Open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. Open our hearts to receive so that we may know you, we may love you, we may draw closer to you there in this season. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Joy to the World. Let us stand as we sing this great hymn of our Christian faith.
let us go forth from this place to be people of Advent, people who embrace and invite the silence. And as we do so, may we remember these words. You are one in whom Christ dwells in delights. You live in the unsung, unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom is never in trouble, and neither are you. Amen. Amen. 